What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Spencer. Taking a look at Ursartix. Uh, this is an archetype that I didn't think I would like. And when I first started playing it, man, I hated it. I thought it was just the most... I was convinced it was like one of the most garbage archetypes in the game. But after a lot of playtesting, it turns out to be like literally one of the most fun rogue decks I think that you can play. Uh, well, rogue is not the right term. It's not rogue. And uh, it's it's budget. So like you could pick up the core for like less than like $10. I think all the cards are like five or something. And this is the best turn one end board that you can do. And to be honest with you, like this is a pretty good end board. So if you don't know what these cards do, basically, they have to tribute monsters to special summon themselves. Now, there's a couple of things that help facilitate these plays a lot. The field spell lets you banish from the graveyard. The fusion spell lets you banish from the graveyard instead of banishing or tributing from hand. So that's obviously a good thing. So once per turn, the field spell lets you banish one. That way you can special summon it out. So the main deck monster, if you don't know, one's a spell on Chop Pop, one's a, a Book of Moon, one's a banish from the graveyard. Now, a couple of the weaknesses of the deck is that these are not on the same chain that they special summon themselves or effect. So like the Book of Moon is gonna start in a new chain after it special summons itself. And that's like the reason it'll never become like tier zero or whatever. Um, but when you get this loop going, and that's like kind of like the crux of the issue, like if you get the fusion and the synchro, and if you have the fusion spell, you get both like pretty much automatically. Um, if you get those two out, you get an insane resource loop. So this is like a, uh, what's it called? I can't think of the ritual basically that any extra deck monster is negated. This does it for non-leveled ones, so Link monsters and XYZ monsters can't activate their effects, and that's great. But when you special summon an Ursartic, the fusion searches, and then for the Synchro, when your opponent special summons, it searches. So you're going to get a bunch of bodies. Uh, but the only problem is that the only way, literally the only way to search out the fusion spell is through the Drytron field spell. For some reason, these archetypes are connected. I don't really know why, uh, but that's how it works. The field spell also, when there's seven special summons, it lets you snatch steal an opponent's monster. And that's actually pretty good. Uh, I didn't think it was good at first, but you're going to be able to trigger maybe three when you first activate it, probably two. And then you're going to account for at least two during your opponent's turn through one way or another, either searching or disruption. So as long as your opponent special summons three times, which, which they will, it's really not bad. And obviously, like the advantage of the archetype is that it's a quick effect everything's a quick effect so during your opponent's turn you know you get to pop all these cards and and it's pretty decent so you're going to be able to go into some really cool synchro plays um and just kind of like dominate at some points but obviously the resource loop is the wrong like the bad part like before you get going you're going like minus two just a book of moon and that's obviously not great but like i said if you can establish this like basically all these all this deck really really needs like in in all reality is one of them, like, they have a monster searcher. This is Mick Polar. So this is really, really good. So this one's fantastic, right, to be able to do that. Um, but you need one. They need one that searches spells on traps. And they need one that a big monster. So the big ones are all tuners. They're all level 8 tuners. Uh, they need one that pops a card. And they need one that bounces back to hand. Because right now, literally the only form of interruption for, like, monsters is Book of Moon. That's good a lot of the times. But what's going to happen is you're also going to run into this huge problem where Book of Moon doesn't stop your opponent, right? Like, this has a really, really bad matchup uh, against uh, Albaz. Not to say that this is ever going to compete with Albaz, but, like, just in archetype, there's no clean way to deal with your opponent's board, which makes things really, really awkward. Now, if you can get Polari up, like, you're usually pretty good, and that's so awesome. Like, you know, if you get interrupt your opponent during their turn and you have a level 7 and you have a level 8 on the board for the synchro play, right, during your opponent's turn, you've obviously already triggered one of them to, like, book a Muna card to pop a spell and trap. Then what's going to happen is you're going to go into Polari and then Polari is going to bring something back. That's obviously good. See, and this is the problem, right? This is a decent end board, right? This stops all my opponent's link plays, which is a big problem for so many, so many decks, or, um, but I don't have that fusion up. I don't have that double resource loop that I so desperately need. And also what you're going to find is a lot of times, you know, the spell trop pop and the, you know, banish from the graveyard, those are cool, but you don't always need those. So you're going to end up searching them and not really being able to use them. Like again, the book of moon is the only real interruption you're going to have, you know, against your opponent. Let's get Necro Valley. And this is like the super advantage of this deck. You can play pod extravagance with the greatest of ease it's pretty much a guarantee like you have to play this in the deck because the main deck is so strong and your extra deck is so little like you're not even going to go into most of the time the stellar wind 
um grand cherry it's fine it's a pop two and it like negates targeting removal but eh, that's just okay now this is like this is the advantage this is what makes this deck have so much potential here plus i have pot of extravagance which is already really good and then i have you know the Meteotis strytron or what's it called drytron fafnir one of the cards <laughs> Wow, it was right, Geki, unbelievable. But I did pop a, a card during my opponent's turn, and yeah, I just you're running three of every name. And like I said, like most of the names are so bad. Like this one adds back, so it's kind of like a free body, right? You always need a level seven and a level eight on the board. So like that's pretty cool, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm not gonna be able to go into the synchro, which is very unfortunate. But I'm gonna be able to bring this out during my opponent's turn, right? To bring it back to my hand, so at least I have the level seven, the level seven on, and I just need any body. No, it needs you to attribute a level seven or higher one. So that's also where a lot of really cool tech cards can come in. Lava Golem is a level seven or higher. Nibiru is a level seven or higher. So if you can't use those cards necessarily, the very least you can use them as discard fodder to special summon them. You get access, like I said, the most some of the most powerful effects in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh that rarely can all be used in the same deck. And that's obviously the hugest advantage here, right? Um, you know, just being able to do that is fantastic. Uh, okay. He has Nightmare Unicorn, and I can't really do anything. I don't have, like, the Double Searcher lets you banish instead of tributing from the hand, and the Fusion does, but the Fusion's in my hand, of course. I need to get any name off the top, and like I said, Nibiru. Now, I can't use Nibiru. This is one of the few decks where, if, like, you top deck Nibiru, it's actually not a bad thing, because you really just need bodies to send to the graveyard. But all I have to do now is go ahead and just pop the Field Spell, which is really, really good, and then I can go into your Sartic. And I already have the fusion. This fusion is so cool. It doesn't use monsters as material. It uses field spells. And that's very, very unique and very cool mechanic. And being able to, like, negative synchro summon is also just really amazing. The The, the best part of the field spell is the fact that you can tribute monsters on the outside. Um, or from the graveyard. From the outside. From the graveyard. Um, and the fusion does that anyway. So if you do lose the field spell when you activate the fusion, but you don't really use the best effect. And a big comeback there, all from top decking Nibiru, which you wouldn't think would be a good thing. Uh, he's going to go ahead and go into Necro Valley. I do have a banish from the Graveyard, so I'm going to be able to pop that. And I also have a Book of Moon. So here we go. Like I said, this is the problem. Like, this activates on the next one. But look at this chain, right? Resource loop. Resource loop. Every time I special summon, every time my opponent special summons, I get to search. One of them searches any or Sarkic card, which I guess is kind of cool. But so many times you're going to want to search Interruption. Like, you oh, like you know, ideally you're going to search the, you know, the... Um, the fusion, but the fusion summon requires specifically the polar bear. The polar bear is already going to be in your graveyard. So you'd have to hard make that again, which most of the time, like I said, you're, you're going to want to search interruption. So like, yes, the synchro does search anything technically, but it doesn't really search anything, to be honest with you. Because you're going to want to search monsters and it's just not really going to work out. So like how good or how bad is this deck? I'm not really sure. Um... Like, is it going to be Blue Eyes and Dark Magician? Yeah, like, probably. You know, it's not really an issue. Skill Drain is definitely a problem in this deck, but you are running super powerful going second cards like Lightning Storm. And like I said, if this deck gets a pop and a bounce and a spell trap searcher, this is, like, way closer to being, like, an actual road deck, right? You don't normal summon. You literally cannot normal summon this deck. Well, I mean, you could, like, turn three, but you're never going to. Lava Golem is just the best form of interruption such a good card right it's just devastating this in some strategies that put up these kind of big negate boards and they kind of use all the resources you just destroy it so that's obviously like awesome so i can go ahead and bring this out and then i can go for the fusion here and then now i can synchro summon which is going to trigger the fusion right when it first starts to take a special summon i get to search a monster and also this lets you add back a banished one so Whatever you banished off of Polari, you get to add it back anyway. So you're going to have like two or three forms of interruption, you know, off of just getting into the fusion. And this card's amazing. Like the, the deck doesn't really function without it. He's going to bring back the Jet Dragon. But he, look how close I am. I can trigger by myself the Big Dipper, right? I'm, I, you have to have seven special summons. So if he tries to go to the battle phase to get over something, well, before the battle phase begins, I just special summon twice. And that is pretty darn cool. Right? And plus, I have my resource loops. I'm probably going to search at least two here. He's going to go into Tyrant Burst Dragon. That's perfectly fine. Not really an issue at all. Righty Special Summon, so I get to add. This one banishes from the graveyard. 
I'm going to go ahead and Book of Moon, the Jet Dragon, and then I'm going to Steel Tyrant. It's a clean steal. It doesn't negate the effects. I can't, it doesn't stop me from attacking. You get to steal that monster as a quick effect during your opponent's turn. And uh, I didn't give this enough credit, like, when I first started. Like, ah, I don't even know if the field spell is that good. It's incredible. I think he ended up, like, negating Tyrant, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't come back. Like, I still get to keep that monster. And, and your board gets up pretty fast, you know. And once you get past this turn, obviously, you get close to the, the Synchro. It lets you pop two cards. But most of the time, right, you're going to go into the Synchro that negates, like, XYZ and Link monsters. Uh, this is against Dark Magician. This has, a, like, a pretty good matchup, especially if my opponent goes into, like, Dragoon or something like that. This is a good opening. He's going to search Illusion of Chaos, which is, you know, really good. It's an Omni Searcher for the archetype. Can't complain too much about that one. He's going to go for Magician Souls. So this is when you see McPuller, it's so good. Right? It's just a pivot point for a really power, like a, no, not super powerful, but like a really good, you know, form of interruption. So I think I'm going to search the Book of Moon because I had Mega Billis in my hand. So I'm going to go ahead and Mega Billis here. That way I can, you know, get rid of that Dark Magician. That way this Soul Servant doesn't do anything. And that's obviously the benefit there. He's going to go for Dark Magical Circle. That's fine. Like I have the Lava Golem. So he can't attack. Now if he goes into... He, wow, like do you not search the Eternal Soul combo? Like, well, I guess he can, right? And that's, just, you know, that's good. That's just the strength of this archetype, right? Stopping your opponent. You get to pl you play during their turn. Your turn, well, you can't, can't synchro summon, but like for the most part, your turn during your actual turn and during your opponent's turn are not much different from each other. So all I have to do is get over those and then it can activate and just keep going, right? This is super good, right? I activate the field spell, I can search the fusion, go into polar, bring something back, and thus my resource loop like kind of never ends and keeps going. Plus, I use the effect of Mega Bills during my turn, but I can banish polar bear or banish something else in the graveyard, bring back the one that pops with spells and traps, and then keep going from there. This is against Labyrinth. It's an okay matchup against Labyrinth. Depends on if you open a Lightning Storm, right? Uh, if you do open up Lightning Storm, it's usually pretty good. But also, the benefit, right? If your opponent, like, purposely sets, like, the Labyrinth spell, you can do some pretty cool stuff. Now, that was a bit unfortunate, right? Like, you would think, well, I guess I could have tributed... Mm, it, it wouldn't be worth right just to pop one i have lightning storm in my hand so i have all this kind of like really good follow-up plus i get to search two cards sartre departure is such an amazing card i'm gonna go ahead and kaiju there and then i can search two monsters i'm gonna go ahead oh sorry i can't destroy because of lord of heavenly he's gonna call synchro yeah that's rough for sure but it's not the end of the world because at least i'm gonna still have all this interruption in my hand right this is a spell and trap pop and then this is a book of moon so I'm going to go ahead and pop one of them. That's going to be the set Big Welcome Labyrinth, which I think he set from the deck. And then he bounced the Kaiju back to my hand. Not really sure why he did that. He's going to try to go to the battle phase. I'm going to go ahead and Book of Moon there, set that card, and then keep going. Now, so I didn't get to use Lightning Storm, but he didn't have a great hand, so I was able to kind of fight through that pretty easily. If he didn't have Heavenly, I, I think I would have been a little bit more aggressive with my plays, but it ended up working out pretty well. This is against Marincess. This has like a specifically like pretty good matchup against Marincess, to be honest with you. Uh, just because they're so dependent on getting to that link one. So if you have Book of Moon, uh, your opponent's not really going to be able to do anything. And this is like, like I said, this is a pretty decent resource loop, right? You get to bring something back. So you don't go minus so hard when you have this. I think there is a home for uh, Mikatonis. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and, you know, special summon this out. I'm going to pop the card, right? I'm pretty sure it's in perm. You could probably read that. If it's not Marincess Wave, probably wouldn't have set it anyways. If he did that, I don't think he would bluff. And then I can go into Big Dipper. Big Dipper can banish. So I'm going to be able to add the card back eventually. And like I said, this is the shortcoming. It's so close. If I had the fusion, if I had access to the fusion monster, that would be insane. So there almost needs to be a different synchro one that instead of searches the field spell maybe you already open it and you can search the fusion spell and that's significantly better you know i can banish right the field spell lets me banish and then once again book of moon <laughs> sorry you can't really do anything there now it's not really that big of a difference because this is a link strategy so he's already like way behind the eight ball here and i think he kind of realizes that in scoops like unless he has something to immediately answer this card he's not going to really going to be able to do anything because all link monsters are negated uh, this is against Math Mech? Sure. Oh, okay. I wanted to showcase this because 
this game crashes on me constantly, but it's the best simulator, which is super unfortunate. So here's how it went. I had a Book of Moon during my opponent's turn. This is how I searched it out. I Book of Moon. It was a diameter. Okay, now what he went into was a transcode talker and then a heat soul. The first thing I did during main phase one was I attributed over his transcode talker, right? Because I know that he searched at some point Cynet Mining, the one that's a counter trap that like banishes. And that's obviously very bad, but you have to control a code talker monster. But by also attributing over his kaiju, his super factorial became much, much worse. Now he's going to get an Omni Negate because of diameter. But he's not going to be able to send from my hand field. And that's huge. So he's only going to bring out two. I think he gets to search out a card. Alan Bershon's fine. He's going to search another diameter. And this has an Omni Negate. But I need to get rid of that Sinate Mining because I have the two super powerful field spells here. So I'm going to go into Polari. He's going to go ahead and negate there. So I pretty much pantsed him because I already made this and I already have one of the field spells. So I can just banish this and, you know, banish the other copy there. Right, and I can banish the fusion spell, so it's kind of like the, an extra copy of it. And then I can search two names. So this is very, very good. So I'm going to go ahead and go into the fusion here. Go into... Now I can go into Mega Polar, so I can just destroy that. I can search a card, which is fantastic. And now I can also go into a Synchro Monster, which, as you might imagine, is extremely good against an XYZ and Link Summoning deck completely. So I'm going to go into Mega Billis. That's going to, you know, banish. That's also going to trigger the fusion, which is really the important part. He does have Ghost Ogre, and that is pretty bad. But I still am able to Book of Moon something when I need to. But he's Special Summon, so I get to search another one. I can search a Mega Polar. This card's such cool art. He's going to go into an Ide a Diameter. And he's going to go into Laplacian, but Laplacian does not do anything. So all I have to do now is Book of Moon, his diameter, right? I want to get rid of that Omni Negate. He's going to have to have at least one more extender. I think the only out is like a big link. So he's going to have to find an extender first. And then it's not going to have his effects. But I think he was like, he's going to be able to crash. So I'm kind of like challenging, right? I don't want you to go into like a Math Mech XYZ to have an Omni Negate. Like I got to get rid of it soon. So, you know, let's see what you got. And he didn't have anything, which is really cool. It's very cool that you can still you know, kind of um, steal something like that. And this against Trap Trick. A very good opening. That's crazy. Like, these are very good combos, right? Your opponent normally is maybe going to have, like, one Omni, and then you can just do the Lightning Storm for the rest. He's going to go for the Trap Tricks, right? He's going to search out the one that can Special Summon itself. That can trigger a bunch of things. But he's going to go into Sarah, and then he's going to go to the end phase. So I think he played that a little funky. Should have gone into Sarah and then used the trap. So I'm going to go ahead and, you know, get rid of the back row. I can go into the fusion now, which is fantastic. I wish there was, like, one more Sartic Drytron card. That would make a big difference. If you could search anything, like, it, maybe sometimes you open the fusion and you want to search something else. But, unfortunately, nothing else applies, you know, for this. It needs to be one more Drytron spell that has something to do with her Sartics. I'm going to go ahead and banish out from the graveyard. That way his field spell can't bring anything back, or at least a monster to pop my field spell. So you got to be a little bit more proactive there. Now I can go into the fusion. I can go into the synchro, which is obviously super good against this Link and XYZ based deck. And I can search out Billis. I can add back, right? I can. This is the one that searches, and then I can start to clear his board. I think he's gonna bring back Sarah, which is a bit unfortunate, you know, because it isn't uh, negated because it came from the graveyard, even though it is an extra deck monster, but. Truthfully, it's fine, right? I have a, I'm going to have a pop during my opponent's turn. Uh, I'm going to have a book of moon during my opponent's turn. So everything's kind of just, you know, fine and dandy. He's going to go for Mantis. That is fine. Uh, I'm basically going to challenge him to have an extender. He's got to have the insect one specifically or else he's not going to be able to do anything. I'm going to trigger a bunch of stuff. Now he gets to set a spell and trap, but that doesn't matter. I have the answer for whatever he sets. That's trap hole, but these are all quick effects, so... Tries to go to the end phase. I'm just going to go ahead and pop that. And I can go ahead and search another monster. And the loop just continues, right? I can just keep going through. I can go through a synchro now. And the synchro can give me, like, another pop two. And that's fantastic. Or you can go into, like, the wolf one that shuffles itself back when it gains a certain amount of attack. Uh, and then we'll just play one more trap trick one. Lava Golem, Pot of Extravagance. Kind of insane. Now, I don't get to, you know, use... Technically, I could go for the Banished Graveyard effect, but 
probably just going to wait, right? Because Lava Golem is going to be so good against this deck. He's going to go ahead and just set that again. I don't really know what's going on. He's going to go for the new one. I can search out a Mermello. And he goes in the end phase. So he played that super funky. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go for Pot of Extravagance, of course. Super free. And then I can search the field spell. And this is like, the hand isn't getting much better than this. Now, I don't get to use Lava Golem or Sphere Mode, but they are extenders. And that's all that really, really matters. So this is the one that lets me add back. He's going to go for Floodgate Trap Hole. That's fine. You can usually fight through a little bit of interruption here. I think normally two. Two is the limit. If your opponent goes past that, then it's kind of rough. He's going to go ahead and attach. That's fine. I can go ahead and special summon. And then I can go ahead and banish Floodgate Trap Hole. Right? The possibility that he can like use it again. I'm going to go ahead and banish the Book of Moon to bring back the Megabilis. Go into the Fusion. Go into the Synchro. And, you know, that triggers it. Such a good two-card combo. So fantastic. And there we go. I'm going to go ahead and add this back, right? The Spell and Trap Pop, the Book of Moon. So the Fusion is one that's a free special summon, and then this is also another free special summon, which is great. So I was able to eat through that interruption pretty easily, which is super nice. I'm going to go ahead and Book of Moon there. He's going to go for the Field Spell, but if he activates the Field Spell, of course I'm going to go into Polar and just pop it. So cool. This, this artwork reminds me of Appaloosa. Definitely a super car, cool artwork. Art work <laughs> jeez okay i'm gonna go ahead and pop this so he doesn't have an extra summon and then i think he's just gonna have to set one and pass but i don't have to do anything do i, I don't have to play into any of his trap card stuff because i can just beat over it and then attack for game so i will do a deck profile for this probably tomorrow or something like that i'm pretty happy with what the list is like i said there's still those it's not a complete archetype. I mean, technically it is, quote unquote, a complete archetype, but it's missing a few extra pieces of support to make it like actually pretty decent. It's already like super fun to play right now, but if it just, I talked about it in the beginning, if it has those three cards, now you're talking about a real archetype that can kind of do some really cool stuff. That's the way I'll say it. Um, let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section down below. Other than that's going to do it for today's video, and I'll see you guys next time.